Hello, Dr. Alexandra Cope here. I'm the in-house naturopath at Boketto and also affiliated with Lifestyle Physicians in Warrington. And I'm here to talk to you today about cyclical living for fertile creation. This isn't limited to people that are trying to conceive or people with PCOS or that are um, currently cycling. It can also pertain to people without a womb. Not all women have a womb. Not everybody with a womb is a woman. And also for people with menopause, you just use these um, phases and cycles in conjunction with the moon if you are not cycling or if you're trying to cycle. And so I made a little presentation because I'm a visual learner and I wanted to talk to y'all today about specifically the herbs and then also how to use this blend. We're gonna focus on the first phase. Here we are, present. We're gonna focus. We're gonna focus. Focus on the first phase, the follicular blend, um, because the new moon is coming up, and on May 11th, I believe, and this is on days one through 14. Not all of us have a perfect 28 day cycle. A lot of people ovulate like days 12 to 17. You can tune in to know when you're ovulating, but in short, it's a cervical mucus. Um, what, that's kind of like egg white. So this is menses to ovulation and more estrogen predominant. So here, when we're looking at the ovary, for those of us that are trying to conceive or more curious about physiology, we have these follicles. These are what um, drop the egg, right? And so these are when they're little and then they all start to grow and build estrogen anabolism and also builds the uterine lining uh, via the granulosa cells or these granular cells because they convert cholesterol to DHEA to testosterone, aromatization to estrogen, the three types of estrogen. These particular, we're focusing on estradiol. Um, and they help build and feed these follicles to grow, to drop the egg. A lot of docs focus on progesterone when they're hormone balancing. I don't believe in that. I think that we, one, we need to focus whole body, the hypothalamus to the pituitary, to the ovaries, the thyroid and the adrenals. So we need to focus on these parent hormones, of cortisol and insulin that we'll get to that help also regulate estrogen and progesterone. Also, if you just bring progesterone to the spotlight, which is what these, this, after it releases the egg, it becomes this corpus luteum, this little kind of sack. Um, if you're not having a healthy plump follicle, then how do you expect it to start releasing progesterone in a healthy way? Here we have this ideal menstrual cycle. Sorry, this is blurry. blurry. Um, this is the FSH and LH this is what the pituitary releases. Here's to get you um, oriented where we're talking. We're talking days one through 14. The average cycle is 29 days. It actually spreads out as we get older. Um, so like 30 and beyond, you might even go up to like 35 days. You might go down to 22 days. Um, here is the estrogen and progesterone. From here on, we're talking luteal. So here's the corpus luteum. And from here on, we're talking building up into ovulation. This is where the uterine lining is shedding. This represents the temperature. And so if you're gonna be tracking, I suggest the Read My Body app, really good. If you're gonna be tracking, um, then you'll see your temperature shift. So we're gonna talk metabolism, cortisol. If you're more curious about that and how to live cyclically, cyclically um, check into my last writing with Boketto, an introduction to cyclical living. Um, here, we're going to focus on thyroid a little bit. Uh, imagine if you got your thyroid measured here at day 17 and it was like normal, but here it's tanked. Just curious. I don't um, like this anabolic catabolic, so kind of ignore that for right now. 
Um, and then here, this is the hypothalamus. This is the G and RH pulsatile frequency that tells the pituitary um, when to pump out a thyroid stimulating hormone, what to tell the adrenals with cortisol, and also the ovaries with um, estrogen and progesterone. So moving into the herbs that I chose and why, this I'm on the luteal blend. How I like to use it personally, I say one pincher full because dropper fulls get confusing. And I like to put it in water and glass because glass doesn't shift the flavor of the herbs or the composition. Um, some people take them straight under the tongue. It's a bit harsh for me to have like kind of that taste of alcohol. And if you don't like alcohol, you can just boil it in some tea. Alcohol has a lower evaporation point, so the alcohol will evaporate out and you can maintain most of the herbs. Holy basil I chose because it is the ultimate adaptogen, meaning that it helps regulate cortisol. It helps you endure the harshness of life. It's also a little bit calming and relaxing and an endurance adaptogen. There's this really great study with mice where they gave them like eleutherococcus, which is ginseng, uh, holy basil and uh, like amphetamines and then some other adaptogens and they raced them swimming. The holy basil mice won and that study is always stuck in my head when I've been giving people uh, or choosing adaptogens for people that need to endure life. If you think about the follicular phase in building, a time to lift heavier, um, a time to fast a little bit more, it can help you fast. It can help regulate your appetite via insulin. Also, if you have PCOS, this is a great one to choose. Um, and it's just amazing. Help you lift heavier, run further, et cetera. It's a holy protector in India, right? So if you smell holy basil, it, you, you, um, you just have to stop and just take it in. And if you look at it, you almost see the flowers look like these little purple holy elephants. And that applies to physiologically. It's radio protective for so those of us that are worried about EMFs, amazing. And then also it's a really strong antioxidant. Most of the time with fertility issues, I'm really encouraging people to look at antioxidants and to take culinary herbs because that aroma of the culinary herbs, um, it helps quench uh, free radicals or oxidative stress and helps heal areas. Our, um, our ovaries and uh, testes are actually really, really prone to oxidative stress. Um, this fancy word phytocytokine and immune modulator. Tulsi doesn't like cause die off. It actually brings the immune system up where it needs to go and down where it needs to go. Um, so it doesn't cause die off of viruses or bacteria often. Um, phytocytokine just simply means that it is, it has this really genius way of going to cells and transforming them like stem cells and in order to actually shift DNA to be healthier. Um, and so this, this protein peptide can help build up cells where they need to go or else kind of break down and eat them up. Think about that with epigenetics, pretty strong if you're trying to have a kid. Motherwort, excuse that, rude. No, no, no. Here we are. Motherwort, motherhood's helper. It's a PMS soother. It's specific for, this is more herbalish jargon. Good. Specific for uh, pain in the pelvis accompanied by palpitations and anxiety. So if you think about thyroid, which often if you're having fertility issues or period issues, the thyroid is responsible. Um, when your thyroid's too high or too low, it can cause the skip of the heartbeat. And then you also think about um, cramps and the PMS soother. It can help you really like take this full breath and relax smooth muscle, which is heart and uterus, and then also blood vessels and digestion um, to make your blood flow a little bit more even and for you to take this full deep breath. 
Um, here at Galactagog and Aminagog, it can help drive blood into the uterus, but not as strong as Dongguai or other herbs like that. And it's also um, studied to help prevent th um, fibroids. So think about like endometriosis or fibroids, um, estrogen dominance, really great for that. Bringing it home here with this cortisol connection of motherwort and Tulsi, um, the hypothalamus, remember that pulsatile frequency right here, signals to the pituitary in the brain, here to the thyroid, adrenals, ovaries, and testes. Here's the sex hormones, here's cortisol, here's thyroid, um, and to target tissues. So if we're in this constant state of fight or flight, um, which can happen with a lot of emails or watching the news, I mean, just living today in the pandemic, then what cortisol does is it causes a, um, it causes too much glucose to be mobilized out of the cells. And it asks the pancreas to stop producing insulin. Insulin helps drive glucose and sugar into the cells, energy into the cells, um, with like a co-transport. And so, and so for the cells to create DNA that needs to be created, RNA that needs to be created, and also take things out of the cells for detoxification. If you are having this sustained amount of stress, with which most of us are having, then you have too much cortisol, not enough insulin, and the cortisol will signal for your liver to start making more glucose via gluconeogenesis. And so you have a ton of sugar floating in your blood, um, diabetes, PCOS, and then you, um, you become insulin resistant. Remember holy basil is an insulin sensitizer. Um, and you were in the state of fight or flight. You need energy to fight. You need energy to run. Then your cells start starving of glucose and they signal out to the hypothalamus like, Hey, we're starving here. Uh, can you send some hunger, hunger signals? And you start reaching for simple carbs or foods that um, to bring glucose in quick. That can cause inflammation in your system. And also it can cause you to have crazy cramps if you go for like the PMS eats, right? And so one way is regular eating. That's when your cortisol is higher to eat more regularly during the luteal phase. And then also to take these herbs. So just bringing it back here, we talked about um, cortisol a lot, and I want to come into these kind of stars, this maca and Chinese peony and why I chose those before I end. Maca is, an, is a Quechua um, superfood. It's kind of like a broccoli potato. <laughs> Um, and so this is a really strong antioxidant. Remember how sensitive our uh, gonads are to oxidative stress. It helps testosterone, this pre-ovulation spike, and it also helps with metabolism um, through phase one. Phase two, we, we need more of like vitamin Bs, et cetera. Um, it helps bring estrogen up where it needs to go and then down where it needs to go also helps build progesterone into the luteal phase. Peony, which we're gonna end with, is an absolute profound uterine tonic and helps prevent fibroids along with motherwort. Um, is a great blood builder and absolutely just an amazing, beautiful herb. Next, we'll talk about rose and more with the luteal blend. And in summary, always get your hormones tested and stay tuned.